hi everybody. Welcome to What Would Cynthia Do? I'm back. Uh, it's been a real wild couple of weeks. I'm gonna play this, hold on. Yes. Okay, hopefully y'all can hear this in the background. This is actually the Pump It Up playlist that my friend Fosia um, made for the crowdfunding campaign. And everybody who donates $25 or more will get this Spotify playlist. And it's, I mean, if I do say so myself, it's very good. <laughs> and the whole idea is like, it's, it's a playlist you can listen to when you're trying to like hype yourself up for an interview, a negotiation, a presentation, hard conversation. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, if you're joining on the LinkedIn side, please say hi. I love to see you. Um, and don't forget you can tune in via what would Cynthia do.com and see the archives on my website. Um, hi everybody on the, uh, IG side designer, Nitra. Oh, Hey, Nitra, Liz Gonzalez. Ra hey, Randy, <laughs> caramel swirl, two chains. Thanks for joining. Um, Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about how to avoid, honestly, many of the most common pitfalls that we face in our careers as people of color. Um, really, it's, it's quite simple, and I'll get into it in a little bit. And there's also gonna be time for some free flowing, ask me anything. So if you have questions for me, drop them on either side. Hey, Nidra, um, put them in the, um, in the chat, or the, if there's a question box, I don't even know if there's still a question box over here on IG. <laughs> um, put them in the chat for me and I'll answer them. Hey, Lindy's, uh, it's great to see you. Um, okay, let's get right into it. I wanna do, you know how you do the intros here, names, pronouns, what you do, if you wanna share. It does not have to be like what you do for your day job. Um, and one win, and I like to give people air horns on this show, so if you share one, I'm gonna give you one. Let me tell you my win. Uh, the crowdfunding campaign to create the Leadership Accelerator, the Embrace Change Leadership Accelerator, specifically for women of color, just passed $40,000 raised earlier today. And there's an air horn for myself. Um, and for everyone who's contributed, because it's like really major and I'm really excited. It, it gets us that much closer. There's only five days left for you all to get these really amazing rewards that are available exclusively. And I mean only through this campaign. So. I really don't want anyone to be like, oh my God, Cindy, I really love those stickers, which I'm gonna show you later, some of them, uh, like like these amazing beauties, um, in like August or something, because literally I'm only selling things through the campaign. So please check out the campaign. The link is here on the LinkedIn side, ifundwomen.com slash product projects slash embrace dash change. And for you all over here, hey Deepa, um, Hey, Nikki. Oh my God, everybody. Nikki was the Gucci coach, um, was on last week's What Would Cynthia Do? special guest. And that episode was incredible. Nikki dropped so, so, so many gems about just, I don't know, our own relationship with ourselves, which arguably is the most important relationship in our lives, you know? Um, so definitely check out the replay for that um, on my website. Hey, Ramona. Um, and yeah, you can get to my crowdfunding campaign and check out all the exclusive rewards. First link in my bio over on IG and at this link here. All right, so we're doing intros. Tell me who's here. Um, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much for your kind words and your congrats. Don't forget to intro yourself. I want to hear a win. Um, it could literally be uh, finishing the jumpstart your online business course. I would count that. Um, and for those folks who are joining, um, if you can hear the music in the background, I never know with volume because I'm like not a professional audio person. But this playlist that's playing right now is it's the Pump It Up, Pump It Up playlist on Spotify, and I uh, commissioned a good friend of mine to curate this incredible list of all women of color musicians and artists, and it's fucking amazing. It's like such a good playlist. Um, so all donors to the campaign, twenty five dollars and up, will get a copy of this playlist, and you can use it to hype yourself up. Okay, um, keep interviewing yourselves in the chat. Um, and we're going to go right into the first segment of the day, which is how are we doing? I've been skipping this the last couple of weeks because we've had special guests. And I wanted to get like right to their knowledge and wisdom for all of you. But I do want to do a little check and hang out with all of you. And to be honest, I was really like, 
mm, should I like not do a show this week because I've been feeling so tired and I didn't have like a super inspirational idea of what to share with all of you. But then of course it did hit me after I decided. Um, hey, Carol. Yeah, that's great. Join on IG. It's a different camera angle. You get to experience something slightly different. Um, so I was really close to bailing and then I was like, no, I want to see, I want to see, I want to hang out with all of you because um, many of you come every week and I just like to have this time together, like Sharon and Louise, Viana, um, Prev sometimes and everybody over here um, joining. Ramona, yes. Oh, thanks for, um, thanks for that kind comment about loving my IG page. I appreciate that. Um, I'm really glad it's helped you navigate through toxic stuff. I mean, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that today, too. So I'm glad you are here. Stick around. Um, hi, Kendall. Um, okay, so drop two words in the chat to describe how you're feeling. I love to do a temperature check. Um, I guess if I was to say, I don't know, I'm so wordy. But if I was to pick two words, I would say um, energized. <laughs> Cause I feel like that encompasses so many things. Um, energized and also present. Yeah. I feel very like present for all of you right now. And that's also, I feel like a gift to myself because oftentimes I'm too much in the future, in the past and all that. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. All right, Sharon, Lenise, tell me how you feel. Two words in the chat and hi, Nancy. Everyone over here on IG side can participate too. I definitely see what you all are saying. So um, while you are doing that, um, I'm also going to tell you a couple updates. So you already know about the crowdfunding campaign. Very excited. We surpassed 40K. We're like five more days to like get as many people who want these exclusive rewards to have them. Um, and oh my God, I'm going to interrupt my <laughs> thing to say, Sharon. Sharon has a win this week of saying no to a client meeting that was scheduled at the end of a long day of healthcare appointments for your daughter. And, um, yes, air horn for Sharon, because it's so hard to say no to those. I don't know if anyone can relate to this. Tell me on either side if you can relate to how hard it can be sometimes to be like, you know, somebody asked for this appointment. I know it could be, it, it could be really great for my business or my career or, whatever, maybe we're, we're people pleasing tendency people. And it's really difficult to draw those boundaries. But also, I wonder if it was because you attended last week's, um, what would Cynthia do with Nikki, the coochie coach who's over on the IG side, um, who talked about how I think, and Nikki, correct me if I'm wrong. But like, when we say no to things, it's the beginning of saying yes to ourselves. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give that an air horn. <laughs> like a real gem and it's so easy to um forget and it sort of relates to me to be honest to this sticker that's one of the campaign rewards um it says it's okay to hit pause um i'll show you all too it's okay to hit pause i don't know if you see it reflected or not um and thank you caramel swirl for saying tired but ready for anything i feel that i feel that balance and kind of the duality of it um, so I wanted this sticker design by at stylish sister, by the way, <laughs> at stylish sister, um, which you can follow her on IG because to me, this has two meanings. And one is related to what you're saying, Sharon. Um, actually, both are. So w one of the meanings is like, yeah, it's okay to hit pause, take a break, rest, nap, drink some water, take a vacation, take a mental health day. And then also partly I wanted this because it's a really important negotiation tactic. So a lot of times as people of color, as women of color, we feel very rushed in a negotiation. Like I have so many clients currently right now going through interviews and like negotiation processes post offer. And that's when organizations like they'll drag out an interview process wait for like months sometimes, sometimes even more than months. And then all of a sudden, once they've given you the offer, you have to like get back to them all of a sudden. And I say, no. I say nay to that, you know? And so I wanted this sticker to be out there to remind people like it's okay to hit pause in the middle of a negotiation. 
especially for those of us who are introverts and I identify as like a slow processor myself. I need time to think shit through, you know? So don't try to be rushing me. Um, your urgency, like your emergency is not necessarily my emergency. So I love that Sharon brought up this win and in negotiations, like if someone is like telling you something and you literally need to hit pause to be like, thank you for telling me that I, I want to think this over and I want to read through this stuff and like, I'll get back to you period. Right. You don't have to say, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Or like, um, yeah, I'm going to say, yes, I just have to figure some things out. No, none of that. Just hit pause. It's okay. You can get back to them after you've had time to think things through because when you're rushed, you're going to make mistakes. So, um, that's why it's really important for me to include that sticker in the sticker pack. Um, when these says I'm anxious in a good way, excited for what's next. And I'm going to give you some applause for that one. Um, I'm excited for you too. And also, can I give you a win for your Instagram reel? <laughs> everyone for that, everyone who's not already following Lanise on Instagram, um, I believe the handle is capital back office solutions. Um, please tell me if I got that wrong and you all can find Lanise over here because the last reel that Lanise did, at least the last one I saw is really great. Um, so check that out. And yeah, Sharon, putting family first, also putting yourself first, you know, um, if after a long day of doing all this stuff for another person, for your daughter, um, and I know Nikki had a lot of gems for us last week too, those of us who are parents, moms, caregivers, um, you just have to say no sometimes. And like people, like you're training, every time you say no, I also think about this. Tell me if it resonates with anybody. Every time you kind of say no or hold a work boundary, you're actually doing other people a favor because you're training them how best to work with you. And you're not letting yourself get pushed into conditions that frankly don't help you do the best work for everyone and for yourself. So I think that's important to think about too. Hi, Don. It's great to see you. Thank you so much. I believe if I'm not mistaken that Don supported the crowdfunding campaign. So thank you for that. I really appreciate everyone who supported and you will be getting a copy of this playlist you might be hearing in the background if you haven't already. Um, so Don is peaceful and amused. I like that. It's very grounded feeling. So let's maybe channel Don if we have to. And Tiara, hey, it's so good to see you. Um, Tiara is real, such a great regular to the show and also just love Tiara as a person. Um, if anyone is looking for communications genius in the health related um and maybe tiara please correct me if i'm wrong um not just health related but also like kind of like nikki like womb care womb wellness um reproductive health area um tiara is your person for communications when it comes to that and also just comms in general so hit up tiara if you need somebody for that um thank you lanise capital back office solutions at capital back office solutions is Lenise's Instagram handle. So follow um, Lenise on there. Support a black woman business owner. Okay. Um, thanks, Don, for the love online campaign. That means a lot. And Tiara's words are accomplished and energetic. Yes. I love it. Okay. So keep connecting in the chat. Um, let me check over here. A no to them is a yes to me. A hundred percent, Nikki. Um, and yeah, I think I got everybody here. So hi, Christina. Welcome. Um, oh, sweet. Don McCoy books. That's your Instagram handle. Is that right? Don, Don D A W N McCoy M C C O Y books over here on Instagram. Everybody can follow Don over here and support, uh, another one of color owned business and great. Glad I got that right here. <laughs> um, feel free to drop more details in the chat. I love using this space to help everybody network and connect with each other. Um, Okay. Oh my God. Oh, the other thing I want to tell you all is that I saw my parents over the weekend, everybody, and it was really nice and restorative. I haven't seen them in months, 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 months. And it was just really nice. Um, so that was like my update um, on this past week besides the crowdfunding. Okay. Now we're going to get to the topic of the day. It's over here. How to avoid the most common career pitfalls for people of color. Really important one. I'm gonna drink some water before I get into it. What's happening here? Oh, hey, Raising Mothers, great to see you. Mm. Hey, in my travels 2020, SRF Esquire. Yeah, lawyers in the house. 
Okay, so how to avoid the most common career pitfalls for people of color. And this is very specific, but you may all have experienced some of these yourself, but it's been coming up a lot for people, both my clients and I've seen a lot on Instagram. Like for example, the reel that I posted on Monday about the glass cliff and like all the incredible activity in the comments and like people were DMing me and stuff about it. So this glass cliff phenomenon was like really a, um, like a light bulb moment, I guess, for a lot of folks, because it put a label and a term to something that people had seen over and over and over again. And what is a glass cliff? Well, it's a situation where like um, a woman or a person of color gets like what sounds like a great opportunity. Like, oh, you can have this promotion to like this amazing um, high leadership level, or, you know, we're gonna give you this opportunity to lead this team or take over this project or department or whatever. It's, it's like an elevated position, hence the cliff part. But in many ways, it's a fucking trap because you're being asked to come in and clean up somebody's mess to handle, put out some type of dumpster fire situation um, or something like that. Like basically you are tasked with basically the impossible. And some flags that can tell you that it is this type of situation is like if it's been all white men up until this situation or like it's just been scandal or controversy for a long time. Other people have not been able to fix this problem. Suddenly like you are the one. Um, so it's a lot of pressure and it's like any false move, any tiny mistake means that you fall right off of this cliff. Um, that's why it's like a ledge cliff kind of metaphor and glass because of like glass ceiling and, and stuff like that. So um, anyway, how do you avoid situations like that? And also like, you know, just I have two clients right now, one of color who are, um, grappling with like the realization that sort of they've been lied to and or potentially like racially gaslit in their jobs for a long time and um it's always really hard to witness people going through that realization because it's kind of like a mourning process like a grieving process because you have to let go of like the the hope that things are necessarily going to change when you look at it and you can finally see like the writing on the wall so they've both been sort of led to believe certain things over time by people and then like never never was there action to back up those words so that's the key to what this how to avoid these pitfalls always 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 pay attention to what people are doing their actions where they're putting money um where they are spending time what they're prioritizing first what they're taking action on look at that over what they will say to you because talk is cheap, right? So um, it's very easy to say things. It's easy to be manipulated through people's words. But when you are being told things over and over and over again, and there's never any action to actually make that a reality, then you know. So please don't fall for, you know, the, the period of time when you're really just like believing what people are saying to you because their actions are not lining up, right? Like if you're being promised this promotion for ages and it's like always one excuse after the other, and then you see other people getting promoted or other people getting raises, you kind of need to be like, what's happening here? Where is the, where am I, when am I actually going to get this promotion? What, what's happening on, on this, right? Action wise. So like I said at the beginning, it's, it's really very simple actions over words. Just remember that every time you are, just keep that as a lens um, over how you see things in your career. And thanks SRF, welcome to the page. Hey, Holistic Dolly. Um, let me know if any of this resonates with all of you. And like, obviously I don't have a monopoly on the knowledge. There's like lots of wisdom in, in our communities here. I know it. <laughs> so please feel free to share also and let me know how that lands with you because i know it's a very simple thing but i also like to simplify things when i whenever possible because you know as people of color it's like life is a full-time job we're, we're doing so many things we're supporting multiple family units we're working multiple jobs um and there's so much emotional labor there's just a lot that we're doing so i like to keep it simple actions over words um Okay, before I carry on to the next thing, and looks like we're all good on this side. Tell me if that was helpful at all for you guys, for you all. Um, and I wanna take a short break to tell you also about, um, like this is a real example of, of action in addition to words. Um, so I have a, a wonderful, wonderful colleague. Her name's Aiko Bathia. 
any of you on LinkedIn or even on um, Instagram, if you follow uh, Ico on at rare underscore coach. Um, and LinkedIn, you can look up Ico's name here. Um, she's just so incredible. Uh, I'm so proud that she is one of the Embrace Change Equity Champions, by which I mean she is sponsoring one full full scholarship for one woman of color to be in leadership accelerator that I'm creating. Um, and when I saw that I go supported my campaign in this way, like literally I thought, and I hope she's cool with me sharing this, but she, I, I emailed her to tell her about the campaign and she's like, yeah, this sounds great. Um, and then she wrote back and she was like, wish I could support more. Um, you know, and I'm also like committed to supporting these other people and causes. And I was like, totally, absolutely. Thank you so much for looking at the page at all thinking that she was like, okay, like donated $25, you know, cause like, that's great. Every dollar counts, seriously, no shade. Um, every dollar counts, every share counts. Um, and then I went and I looked and she's sponsored at this incredible level um, and put like serious dollars behind my campaign. And I almost fell out. Like I had to sit down, I got very emotional. <laughs> I'm still like getting kind of emotional about it now because whew, I also think as women of color, it's like hard for us to receive. Sometimes we're always like, let me help this person. Let me support it this way. Let me pour out. And it can be hard, um, you know, kind of like a thing. And I know Nikki's going to come for me on this side about this, but it can be hard to receive. So I was very beside myself and very moved that I go and, and rare coaching and consulting would um, fund a full scholarship. Um, and there is one more in the campaign for anyone who like is out there in a, in a context and is able to support at this level, especially like corporate giving initiatives, organizational, institutional, um, entities who want to support women of color who actually like, um, could use a boost towards our leadership goals. So I wanted to give a big special shout out to Iko. Um, her solidarity and like support and actions in line with her words is incredible. So everyone, please like show Iko some love. Follow her on LinkedIn if you don't already, because her posts are incredible. Like if you just look at her feed, her posts are off the chain. So good, so good, so on point. She's a Forbes top seven anti-racism educator. I mean, she's literally someone who truly walks the walk in addition to talking the talk. So follow Iko over here at rare, at rare underscore coach. Okay, so um, back to the topic, uh, how to avoid the most common career pitfalls. Let me know if any of this resonates. Drop your questions and your comments in the chat. Um, yes, thank you, Dawn, watching what is happening. Yes, I roll emoji, totally. Um, because it's so easy. It's so easy to be like lulled and seduced by people's words. And, and I think a lot of us, a lot of times, we, we wanna take people at their word. We wanna give them benefit of the doubt because that's what we want for ourselves. Um, but you know, we gotta be careful out here. Um, Lenise says I dodged this bullet during the pandemic. Hell yeah. Good job. Um, almost all my assumptions were proven true and the new hire didn't get any of the support promised. I mean, this right here, this is exactly why we have to pay attention. Like we won't be sold lies and it's not even about people's intentions when they tell you sometimes they, I think they're really not conscious of it but you can really tell what's the real deal when you look for the actions. And yes, Don. I mean, do you know Iko already, Don? Um, maybe you do, but she's incredible. Um, so yes, everybody remember Lenisa's story because oftentimes it will be borne out to be true. The next time you're tempted to like take something and, and you kind of feel intuitively, there might be some red flags about it, but you feel pressured or something, like definitely remember the situation that Lenise is pointing out here. Um, listen to your gut. Okay, so I won't leave some time too for some ask me anything if folks have, um, hey Jazz, hey Shauna, Vicky, hello, welcome. Um, if anybody has any questions that you wanna ask me, literally anything is fair game. Um, oh, and I, I will show you more of the stickers while we're waiting for any questions to roll in. You can ask me about business, career change, negotiation, um, how I stopped being a lawyer or being a lawyer, um, any of these things. All right, so I already showed you this amazing sticker that, that it's okay to hit pause. That's only available through my crowdfunding campaign. Um, 
first link in my bio over here. Um, related to that is REST is um, revolutionary. I love this sticker too. It's so cute. Um, Stylish Sister Taylor, the designer of these stickers, um, designed this one and I immediately was like, yes, no edits, <laughs> no edits whatsoever. Keep it exactly as is. Also, this one has been a real fan favorite, it says Negotiation Queen. That was her design too, um, based on my work. And a lot of people who've seen it on IG and stuff have really liked this one. Um, and oh my God. Okay, these are two of my favorites. Okay, so this one is, I deserve a seat. I'm trying to do this. Can I do it? Yeah. <laughs> I deserve a seat at the table. And it's got like, you know, this fancy exec rolling chair. Um, and then this other one, one of color belong in all places where decisions are made. And truly this one, this is the reason why I'm doing the leadership accelerator in the first place. Like I know not everyone is in a position to, nor wants to, nor should be like exiting the kind of institutional salaried corporate world. I mean, I did, and there's definitely privilege involved in that. And it was absolutely a journey that I wrote about in don't stay in your lane. Um, but we also need people, women of color and people of color to stay in those places because decisions are being made there. Money is being doled out there. Like power is there. And we need like our representatives and stuff there too. Hey, Full Court Press. Um, I, I like to think of it as AOC actually, who I very much admire. I'm a big AOC fan. Um, you know, she's like all about the people, like grounding the people, super, um, you know, like in tune with communities. And also she's she's in the capital because we need people in there too, <laughs> you know? So we can't always be on the outside of these things. Um, let me know. Oh yeah, great. Okay. So any tips on business to business marketing? And then Dawn asked, how, how do I make the shift to entrepreneurship? So let me take them in order. Um, Lanise, who is, hold on, let me drop him at Capital Back Office Solutions over here on IG. Hey, Pilate Bakery. Um, Everybody follow, that's an amazing bakery. They have the delicious, delicious baked goods for anyone in New York City. Okay, um, business to business marketing. Um, so I think the most important thing, Glenice, is like the, like, I don't know if you're doing this already, but like pitching and sales. Um, so it's good to have like a presence or whatever, like the one to many things like social media posts and um, like a website and things that are just a newsletter, like want you to like many people, but at the same time, inside these other businesses, one person usually is making at least the initial decision to pass you on and then have you be hired or whatever. I don't know which level of business you're thinking, but I know you're in HR, so I'm, it's going to be big um, or at least medium sized, probably entities. So you got to find those people who are in that in the spot where they would be deciding to give your materials another look, to give you a phone call, to um, you know have you talk to them about what your services are. And so I actually pitch, I've got a B2C and a B2B arm of my business, right? So on the B2B arm of my business, I pitch, I try to pitch 25 um, like large businesses and entities a week. And that means I have an email that talks about what I'm offering in terms of like, these are my workshops and these are like my, bigger like packages for like uh, organizational institutional solutions to support your people of color, right? I have an email on that and I send it to 25 um, people that I find um, through LinkedIn and stuff per week. And guess what? I usually don't hear back from those and it's very hard. <laughs> At the same time, because I'm doing that activity, other stuff comes my way um, because somehow like things just happen. I don't know if it's algorithms. I don't know if it's like a divine universe thing, but my name then gets around and people then become to know me for that and they seek me out for that stuff. So that's what I would say. Focus on that. If it's hard, it feels icky. If you need more one-on-one -on -one tips, let me know and I can share. But that's like definitely the key. Um, Dawn asks, how did you make the shift to entrepreneurship? Yeah, it was very, I fell backwards into it. <laughs> um, what happened was I, I used to be a public defender, right? I worked for legal aid. That was like my dream job. Hey, RP, RXPX, hi, <laughs> I'm doing the most. Um, and I burned out of that job and then I had to really like do some soul searching, but I decided I wanted to work for myself because I was like, you know what? <laughs> There's a lot of hubris involved here. It's like, you know what? I would be great at being a boss. 
<laughs> and I don't want to answer to anyone else anymore. I don't want to deal with bureaucracy. So let me start my own business. And the first iteration of my business was nonprofit consulting. So like strategic um, planning for nonprofits and social justice organizations, um, like programmatic, like structural um, operational help for, um, you know, like lefty radical orgs and stuff. It did not work. Oh my God, I could not get any clients. I had to work so hard just to get one pro bono gig. So it was a non-starter. But then I pivoted a few times because I just looked at what was working and what wasn't and what I wanted to do more of. And I just shifted each time to go closer to what was working and what I liked doing. Um, so a couple of pivots later, I landed on the career coaching thing. And that was just like, it was a bit like that uh, moment, you know, when you feel like the sky opens up and um, you're like, oh, this fits, like this is working. And then I paid attention to who I loved working with the most, who was coming to me the most. I know it was women of color, not really super surprising. So I just leaned in, niched further and further and further down into that. Um, and the rest is of the same history. Um, but I love talking about that stuff too. So let me know if you have more questions. And yay, big, big up to AOC for being the leader that she is. I mean, she's incredible. Um, oh my God, Richard Perez. Of course I remember you. I thought it was you, but I wasn't really sure. Hey, Richard. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so great. You know, Randy, um, Randy was on here a little while ago. I don't know if you remember him, but he was like uh, head of the interpreting, Randy Schaefer, head of the interpreting division, I think. Um, hey, art activist, always great to see you. Natalie, hi. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much past time as I tend to go. Um, if you all want to join, oh, let's see, what's SRF say? I think my job after 20 years without another position lined up. I did that too. Trauma for a woman of color is real. Yes. What do you recommend someone do to help them with that transition? It's a very scary place to be in. Oh my God, 100%. It's very scary. I'm going to tell you real quick because we are at time. I wrote about it all in my book, Don't Stay in Your Lane which is kind of a meaty book, but like I was very real in it. I did not hold back uh, about the good, the bad and the ugly SRF. So like, I know it's really hard. Um, if I could say one thing, it's like to um, never let go of your belief in yourself because you're going to find your way like you are. You don't need to know what the path is. And one of the quotes I highlight in the book is the path is made by walking. So like, you don't need to know where you're going. You don't need to have a plan. Frankly, I don't know where my business is going to be in one year, three years, five years, but I have like just a very, I just don't allow myself to think that it's not going to work out because I know I'm resourceful. I'm resilient and I will figure it out. I will try things. I will get help. I will ask help. I will receive help when I need it. Um, and then I just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And of course, always compassionately though. Um, so that's okay. I will, let me see, what can I, what can I, um, yeah, I'm going to show you these two stickers that potentially could help. Um, no woman is an island. So get help wherever you can and don't stay in your lane because you don't need to. And people don't need to put us in boxes. Like it's true. And then for the trauma, like, yeah, find whatever the healing is for you. Like identify what, what your grounding and your healing practices are. I just talked about this in a masterclass a week or two ago about changing career as a person of color. Um, and it's, it's very real. If you, I don't know if it, the replay is still available, but DM me if you are interested in that, I can send you that one, but yeah, you got to heal yourself first as you go and then you will find your way. I really believe that. Okay. Got to wrap it up. Um, thank you all for coming. I will be back. Oh my God. Where are my banners? Here they are. Next Wednesday, the 23rd, I'll be back here. Tell me what, what topics you want me to um, talk about. Maybe I'll do a deep dive into um, B2B marketing or uh, shifting to entrepreneurship or something related to that. If you all would like to let me know in the chat. Um, and uh, you are most welcome, SRF. Um, or maybe talking about this, like just being in the scary agony of in between, like you feel like everything's a fog. Also, the other thing is I've written blog posts about this before SRF. So maybe check that out on my website. If you go to the link in bio, scroll all the way down blog and you'll, you'll find it on there. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Lanise. Um, who else was here? Oh my God. Tierra, of course. So many hearts. Thank you, Sharon. Um, thank you everyone who was here and wasn't able to say hi. I know I get it sometimes. It is like that. Shout out to Aiko Bethia one more time. 
incredible icobathia um thank you to everyone who joined on this uh s e a vans c vans i don't know how to read handles srf nat uh richard art activist thank you all for coming and i will see you next time bye